Fido. A brand that's new to me in the Fido bike that I'm reviewing today is called the T1. A utilitarian name that perfectly fits this bike because it's a utility bike. A utility e-bike. Utility bikes are this year's big marketing push for e-bike manufacturers. Utility means getting the job done in a no-frills kind of way. But Fido has managed to pack a little luxury into what is clearly a bike with durability in mind. And thanks to the exposed nature of this design, it's easy to see. For instance, comfort grips. Soft yet also robust, slip-on so no fanciness. Important on a bike that I view as a working person's bike. And if you don't want to work and you want the bike to do the work for you, there is the thumb throttle. If you don't like throttles, there's pedal assist and the bike's seven speeds, shifted via a trigger shifter. Brand, I think this says Stride. I'm not familiar with this brand, but that's what I think it says. Model DSL D200 dual lever, speaking of levers, brake levers, cushioned rubber inserts to keep the fingers happy. On the left, more controls, including the computer display screen. I'll go into detail on this in just a moment. For now, let's look at the switches. Starting with the green button, which is the bike's digital horn. Above that, a headlight switch to select between high and low beam. That'll come into play in just a moment. Handlebars, high-rise motorcycle style with the rising stem and probably the coolest stem cap that I've seen on an e-bike, at least for factory stem caps. Head tube, a little wider, a little wider, there we go, a very long head tube. The reason it's so long support for both the frame tubes and this front rack. Sturdily built, all metal, weight rating unknown, but I've had over 20 pounds in it so far. It's also the mount point for the bike's headlight, and most e-bikes have a front light. This is an actual headlight. Very large, very obvious, and very bright with, of course, the high and the low beams we saw on the switch earlier. The fork is a suspension fork with the manual lockout and its job to keep things smooth and also to hold the front wheel in place. And that's a wheel with sealed hub bearings and fatty tires. You know I like 20 by 4.0 fatties. These have a street tread, a nice choice for this utility bike. I just said 20 by 4.0, here's the size marking and the model CST Big Boat. Mag rims, they're alloy and a blade or star design, whatever you want to call it, it looks good. Fender plastic, two-tone plastic, textured matte black with piano black stripes. To the drivetrain, where it needs to be good for a bike to be... Well, a good e-bike. Pedals, no frills in plastic. The crank set, it is an alloy crank set with a single large 52 tooth chain ring. At the back, a derailleur, which is a budget choice, a Shimano Torni, but it does have a replaceable derailleur hanger. The rear gearing, also Shimano, via a seven speed freewheel. The big ticket item, the rear hub motor. 48 volts, 750 watts, Fido branded, housing part of the rear mag wheel. On the opposite side, braking, mechanical disc brakes, 180 millimeter rotors, both front and rear. Hub motor on, off, controlled via the sealed magnet cadence sensor here at the bottom bracket. That big box, that's for the speed controller, which is the literal brains of the bike, telling the battery how much juice is needed. The battery itself, it has a keyed lock and a mobility scooter style charge port. Labeling Shenzhen Fido 20 amp hour, 960 watt hour, and of course 48 volts, even some cell information. Battery to controller to hub motor, important to get that power to the pavement because this bike is going to be carrying stuff. And that's what the rear rack is for, and if there's one flashy feature on this bike, it's the wood accent. On the rear rack, that's not a separate rack, it's part of the bike's frame. Giving Robust a new definition because you can't get any stronger than making the rack part of the frame. And this frame, this aluminum frame, visually the word stout comes to mind. Nicely welded, an army green finish, and a few extra mount points. I ask what these could be for and they sent me a picture of a plastic storage box that goes right here. I'm not going to share the pic because it's an upcoming product and I don't want to pre-release anything for a company that wants to do it on their own, but trust me, it's cool and adds some potential waterproof capacity to this bike. Keeping water off the rear cargo, that job goes to the rear fender, which is just like the front fender, matte black and piano black. Above that, a rack-mounted taillight. While this is definitely a utility bike, Fido didn't forget that a workhorse also needs to be comfortable for its rider. To go with the front suspension, they added a rear suspension seat post, and on top of that, a very thick saddle. Thick and wide, and it too also has its own suspension, a double coil. Comfort for the utility, and even more utility, even on this seat, because it tilts to allow easy access to the battery. 
fast swaps, or a quick removal for security purposes. Easy to access, easy in, easy out. A quick close of the seat and this Vito T1 robust looking and ready to roll. How does it roll? Well my first observation a little different than I was expecting from a utility bike because this bike is fast. It's rated for speeds up to 28 miles per hour and on e-bikes that usually means pedaling like all the dickens and making sure your mouth is shut because that extra little bit of drag will keep it from hitting a top speed. Not so with the T1. This bike passes 28 and goes all the way to 30, be that pedal assist or with the throttle and also that throttle, it has a cruise control. Meaning that on long runs, not only does the rider not have to pedal if they don't want to, they don't even have to keep their thumb on the throttle. And also that top speed of 30 miles per hour, that's pedal assist or throttle. And thanks to the double, 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 ooh a triple double, this is a smooth riding bike. Even smoother when carrying a load, especially on the front end where a little extra weight helps out. But between the suspension fork, the suspension seat post, and the saddle's double coils, this is a nice riding bike. Far better than I anticipated for a utility bike. Shifting out of the box, perfect. Motor noise, you're definitely going to hear the 750 watt motor spinning up. So no stealth mode sneaking around on the T1, it definitely has a torquey electric motor sound always. It will not only be heard with the headlight, it will be seen even in broad daylight. This is super bright here at 5 feet. How about 15 feet? Low beam and high beam. I'm getting 30 miles per hour on flats. How about torque up hills? What if I stop and throttle only up a steep hill? A true test that the T1 passes well. This will accelerate up to about 12 miles per hour going up this hill, throttle only. Putting it in a class of only about three or four e-bikes that I've reviewed that can pull this off. Down the same hill doesn't show electric performance, but it does show you how well those sealed hubs work. I can coast and get up to 36 miles per hour. The T1 is a large bike, but it's still fairly nimble thanks in part to the handlebars being able to do this. Utility e-bikes popular right now and after riding this, I'm starting to understand why. And being that this is my first look at a Fido bike, I gotta tell you, I'm impressed with the initial quality. It looks to be well built and well specced in my opinion. A strong frame and minimal branding kinda adds to the utility vibe. And there is a lot here component-wise. A nice 750 watt motor. You've just seen how torquey this is. And it has 20 amp hours of battery capacity and as you'll see in just a moment, the price, I believe this is the cheapest 20 amp hour bike I've featured thus far. And nothing rattles, not even this fender. It flexes, but no rattle. I've also said that this is a comfortable riding bike. It's more comfortable with some weight up front. But I want to state this is comfortable for me and note I'm 5'10 and I have this seat all the way down. So as you can see this is a tall bike. Seat height high, step over very low. And also factor in this thick saddle because it's not only thick height wise it's thick width wise and that means if your hips are narrow then maybe you're not going to be as comfortable. Fitment works for me and I like the choice of components and the overall design. The T1 isn't an assemblage of parts, it's purpose built. And being that utility bikes have a purpose, that's important. But as always, I can find a few nitpicks. As I've mentioned a couple of times, it's a little twitchy without some extra weight up front. And the center stand, which A is super cool because I like motorcycle style center stands, but this one, when it folds up, it doesn't fold up very far. This is a bike that's going to be ridden in cities and I can only imagine rolled up curbs, in which case it's going to strike the curb with the center stand. Example of just how low it sits, this step is only 4 inches high. The tail light, a little more recessed than I would like to have a tail light, and also this this should be a brake light. The display could be brighter. This is in the shade of an alley and a lot what it looks like in person. In direct sunlight, it's barely readable. But I'm also going to give a positive here because the bike that I have, this display is in kilometers per hour. Pause here for a quick tale that says a lot about Fido because the bike that I have is in kilometers per hour. But buyers that buy bikes in the US market get a mile per hour display. And that is because I told Fido I wouldn't review the bike unless it was in miles per hour. They said give us a month. And a month later this arrived. Literally from Sesame Street. A new speed controller and in this bubble wrapped packaging the new display. Set for miles per hour. And here you can see the display functions. The headlight switch, top button turns that on and off and it cycles through the three available pedal assist modes or no pedal assist even cruise settings. 
And of course, you can always see the battery status level via the display. And it wasn't until I took the old display off that I realized, wait, there's even a USB port. I like a company that will adapt for the market it is serving and listens to its customers. And by the way, all the bikes shipping in the USA, I want to reiterate this, will come with the mile per hour display. So buyers don't have to do any swapping. Now if they could only make it brighter in the sun like that headlight. So a lot that I like here, a few small nitpicks, but for the $16.99 asking price, I think this is a good workhorse for those in need of an electric utility bike. Or at the least, worthy of a look. I'll put a link down in the description. I almost forgot to mention range. What have I received with this 20 amp hour battery and 750 watt motor? 40 to 60 miles. Now I would expect a little less if it is loaded down. You could probably get significantly more if you had the discipline to keep it in the lowest pedal assist speed. And that's my look at the Fido T1 electric utility bike. Comment below with what you think about the T1 or utility bikes in general. And how about this army green color? Would this bike not look cool with military cans hanging off the side? Comment below. Thank you for watching Kev Central. And now I'm going to go take this down and donate it to the local trail nonprofit on behalf of Fido.